بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم لا حول ولا قوة الا بالله الذي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا ابي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف وجعلنا من أعوانه وأنصاره اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الوهم وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزان علومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحم خب الحمدلله we have توفيق to continue our study of Zadu Salik and inshallah today we will complete the book and we will have a quick review of the book as you remember the late Mulla Muhsin Faith Kashani gave 25 practical instructions and then after that he said a wayfarer has to have hurriya, freedom. Freedom here means to be free from three things. Shava'ib tabi'at. Those things that from this uh, dunya, this worldly life may come and mix with our life with our orientation our intention etc the other thing was vasavise or that temptations of habits the things that we may be uh, doing because of temptations from nafs nafs amare sometimes decorates beautifies things things which have no basis may be presented as something very important illusions imaginations things like this and then Navamisa Amme things that public and we mean by public those who may not be religious those who may not be very spiritual they have some ways of life that we need to be careful otherwise if we follow them because just they have influence or majority uh, power etc we will not be able to reach our own goal خب. after this <coughs> now he wants to say what can be achieved if we put into practice what he said if we embark on the spiritual journey as we said in the beginning and then observe these 25 things and try to free ourselves from these three problems what will happen he says harke in bisto panj cheese mazkur ra bar khud lazim gardanad Whoever makes these 25 things obligatory for himself. So he compels himself or herself to do these 25, to observe these 25 and make efforts. Of course, as ruye ikhlas, sincerely, not that, you know, because he wants to become famous or people say, no, he's a spiritual, etc. And we mean by ikhlas, ibtigaan li wajhillah, la li gharazin dunyawiyan ajil. For the sake of Allah, not for a quick uh, benefit of dunya. If it is for akhirah, it's also okay. If it is for nearness to Allah, it's okay. So even working for akhirah is good. But higher is to just do it for the sake of Allah even if it's not going to help you in Akhirah suppose your position in heaven is guaranteed but still you want to do it if someone makes these 25 things necessary for himself and makes efforts sincerely روز بروز حالش در ترقی باشد 
day by day his or her condition will improve initially it takes time to see the results so you may not notice sometimes you think you have not made any progress but you have made progress whether you notice or not you have made progress because sometimes you know for us there must be big change so that we feel because we may not be that sensitive we may not even for uh, bad things also see the difference yeah so for example if we do something for the sake of Allah for example make someone's uh, problem you know solved sometimes we don't feel any change but you have changed you make one salat with remembrance the presence of heart you made big change but you may not notice you have I don't know done a study for the sake of Allah you made difference but you may not notice on the other hand for example if you make one ghaybah backbiting we may not notice that how much we have you know uh, unfortunately fallen down maybe if for example for few days someone you know does something you know many times maybe they feel even some people don't feel but people who are very sensitive they may quickly understand uh, I have mentioned in some of the previous lectures that uh, Ayatollah Mirza Jawad Agha Maliki Tabrizi who was a teacher of Imam Khomeini he has the book Muraqabat so once after that he went to the hujra of a talabe to thank him people were surprised you know why Allah is going to the hujra of this talabe he, he said uh, last night when I was doing you know about the tahajjud I had some good you know condition and I looked carefully and realized it's not coming from me and then I realized this Taleb in his hujra was praying for me so to feel the impact of dua of someone and then knowing where this blessing is coming from is something that someone who is very sensitive whose perception and reception are high can understand or for example once some people started talking about someone just they were getting into Reba he left and said you took me 40 days back So he is feeling that. So if we observe these 25 things without exaggeration, ruz be ruz, halash dar taraqi bashad, every day is improving. You know, shaitan comes to us and says, you know, what have you achieved? You are not achieving anything. You are, you know, wasting your time. You are not making any progress. But the truth is that every day we are making progress. If we just manage to save, you know, if we make one step progress and uh, stay there. Not that, you know, we go one step forward and go one step backward. No. But even with the things that we are doing, uh, Alhamdulillah, we are making progress. Just we need to maintain. Khop. Then he says, Hasanatash mutazayid, Vasayatash magfur, Vadarajatash marfur. He mentioned three things to explain this progress, this taraqi. Hasanat will be increased. 
sayyad bad things from the past will be forgiven and ranks will be raised now if this person is ahl ilm if he's a seeker of knowledge for whom knowledge marifa understanding are very important and we mean by ahl ilm real knowledge Someone who is trying to understand ahwal mabda wa ma'ad wa ma'rifat nafs to understand about our origin, about our destination, about our own nafs, self-knowledge. So someone for whom these things are important has heard something, has learned something and he wants to understand them properly. What he has studied with teachers and the books, he wants to understand properly and has great attention and you know interest in this kamal ihtimam be ma'rifatan has perfect interest in this ruz be ruz ma'rifatash mutazayid mi gardad be ilham haq every day his knowledge will increase not through conventional methods only. Yes, of course, he's taking or she's taking lessons, studying, taking notes, mubahasa, teaching. That's there. But this is different. With Allah's inspiration, gets more and more knowledge. که از عبادت و صحبت علما و سخنان ایشان او را حاصل می شود How much he will get knowledge through inspirations This is determined based on his or her capacity استعداد How prepared they are But what prepares it's very interesting. What prepares for this ma'rifah through ilham, through inspiration, is your ibadah. Wa'bud rabbaka hatta ya'tiyaka al-yaqeen. And company of ulama. And listening to ulama. Company of ulama. Ulama al-Rabbani. Not only theoretically and conceptually increases our ilm husuli but also gives us istidad for receiving inspiration from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ulama rabbani help us with our mind and heart so ibada and company of ulama these two create istidad the more about it, the more company of ulama we have, our stedad will become more. This is for ahl ilm. For them, ma'rifa is very important. Wa'illa, if he is not or she is not from ahl ilm, woman who is interested in getting nearer to Allah, but not that much in the field of ma'rifa safaye batini wa du'ay mustajabi wa nahwa an az kamalat dar khur sa'y u tawajjuh khud miyabad at least they get those who are not ahl ilm and ma'rifa they get safaye batin purity of their inner self purity of heart and dua mustajab accepted dua their duas will be accepted and things like this so it has a spiritual impact on them but this is proportionate to their sai and tabajjo efforts and attention efforts and attention و به هر تقدیر این اینی که 
او را قربی به حق سبحانه حاصل می شود They will get some nearness to Allah سبحانه و تعالی و محبت some love و نور some light محبت کامل و نور وافر سمره معرفت است Of course Complete محبه and uh, abundant light comes through ma'rifa so if you want more try to be ahl ma'rifat as well not just uh, you know someone who's interested in spirituality and nearest to Allah without ma'rifa this ma'rifa can reach the point that they would be able to witness and see most of the affairs of Akhirah in this world like Harithat ibn Nu'man whose story is mentioned in Kaf you know the one that some say was Haritha one of the ashab of that Rasulullah saw him and said كَيْفَ أَسْبَحْدَ he said أَسْبَحْتُ مُوْقِنًا Rasulullah said لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عَلَامَةً مَا هِيَ عَلَامَةُ يَقِينِكَ and he said my yaqeen has made me not able to sleep in the night you know not to eat and drink during the day and then he said I can see people who are here who are people of heaven who are people of hell so he had this kind of Mushahad, uh, this kind of vision. M then he says, Mahabbat hargah ke ishtadad yaft wa behad ishq resid. When Mahabba is getting stronger and stronger and reaches the level of ishq. Ishq means kind of overwhelming love. When it reaches the level of ishq and then he is, you know, really immersed in remembrance of Allah, he says, this is what we call liqa'ullah. So liqa'ullah is not physical encounter with Allah, definitely. It's a matter of ma'rifa, overwhelming love and complete remembrance of Allah to the extent that of course this is what I add you may forget yourself Ashir doesn't that much think about himself yeah Ashir maybe even forgets eating drinking you know Fana'if Allah wa baqa'ib Allah they also call this Fusul and Laqa they call Fana'if Allah to annihilate in and by Allah subhanahu wa means you have self annihilation and then you get uh, united with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of course with exact meaning uh, this should not be misunderstood and he says this is what is the purpose of creation According to famous hadith Kanz Makhfi, you are all familiar. This hadith Qudsi. Kuntu Kanzan Makhfiyan fa ahbabtu an u'raf fa khalaqtu al-khalqa likai u'raf. According to this hadith Qudsi, Allah says, I was a hidden treasure. And then I wanted to be known. So I created people so that I am known. There are, you know, discussions here. Uh, many ulama have talked about this hadith, but we just uh, mention what is now here in the book. In the Quran, we have the famous ayah: "Wa ma khalaqtu al-jinn wal ins illa liyabudun." ما أريد منهم من رزق وما أريد أن يطعمون. Allah says, I have not created jinns nor human beings except to 
worship me or to serve me according to what we have in uh, our you know um, scriptures it says ay liya'rifun liya'budun ay liya'rifun so ibada is interpreted as ma'rifa why instead of for example uh, ibada just ma'rifa is not mentioned marhum faith says because we are interested in a kind of ma'rifa which comes through ibadah not every ma'rifa because ma'rifa he says has different types it's not that every ma'rifa leads to nearness some lead to nearness not all he says aksar ammi most of lay people their marifa is through taqlid taqlid in fiqh is in, you know not problem actually is necessary for ordinary people but in knowing allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in khuda shanasi knowing allah knowing religion knowing akhirah ma'rifatun nafs you cannot do taqlid you have to try to understand you have to grasp it of course for someone who doesn't have knowledge uh, the best thing is to refer to the experts after they establish truth of religion they can go to expert for the details but someone who understands that is different i say something uh, this is uh, my idea of course uh, i'm not saying 100% I, and i say my idea so that you don't take it as a 100% fact you can think about it you know i have to for example fast i have to make a wudu if i do these things properly through taqlid it's not reducing my spirituality suppose there's a muqallid who does his wuzu with presence of heart it's not that his salat will be less effective because he has learned this through taqlid in my humble understanding i might be wrong but it seems to me mujtahid gets lots of reward lots of benefits because of ijtihad i am not denying that but when it comes to practice whoever acts according to this fatwa whether it's mujtahid or muqallid who is following a qualified mujtahid they get sawab actually maybe this muqallid if he has more presence of heart may get more sawab than his marja if doesn't have presence of heart in that salat yeah so taqlid is not uh, stopping you in benefiting uh, spiritually but this is about ahkam uh, shar'i this is about practical rulings but when it comes to knowing allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knowing imam knowing akhlaq these kind of things which is not a matter of just practicing it's a matter of ma'rifa it makes big difference whether you have such knowledge or you are just uh, you know doing taqlid of experts i'm going talking about details about principles of course no you cannot do taqlid you have to argue for the truth of religion or you know existence of allah etc if someone has studied about imam zaman has learned from teachers about imam zaman and someone who believes that imam zaman is there and you know has you know listened few th to few things but doesn't have deep ma'rifa makes big difference or about Allah subhanahu someone knows names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
in a very detailed scholarly way and some one who just has heard these names it makes big difference this is my idea I, I don't think it's uh, you know not uh, acceptable by ulama but I want to take responsibility so that you think about you don't take it for granted okay so اکثر آمرا نیز معرفتی از راه تقلید حاصل است این such issues about Allah آخره معرفت و نفس عوام most of the lay people they تق... معرفت است رو تقلید here تقلید affects in عبادت it seems that an affect you can get all the benefits of عبادت if you are a مقلد متکلمین را نیز معرفتی از راه دلائل جدلیه تیولوژیانز نرمالی اهل کلام they use premises that in علم منطق we say these are not necessarily یقینیات sometimes because کلام sometimes is you know a matter of arguing and جدال in jadal sometimes they use you know in mantiq we say sanaatul jadal we have sanaatul burhan which is only based on yaqiniyat but we have sanaatul jadal you can use musallamat you can use maqbulat you can use maznunat even musallamat are things that everyone accepts without questioning yeah it's a thing that people accept it's not proved but it's a common saying maqbulat are the things which are not musallam but are accepted both parties for example have accepted maznunat are those things which are not 100% certain but greater probability is there it's you know suspicion in a suspicion in a logical sense so ahl kalam may use these things philosophers who use barahin intellectual proof and demonstrations they use yaqiniyat but still they may not develop love a philosopher is very close to haqiqa but maybe only in mind a philosopher may not have necessarily great love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if it is just a philosopher if it's a philosopher is also a arif is a lover of Allah that's different but we are talking about disciplines kalam has its own limitations philosophy makes better use of aql burhan but still has limitations if it is just philosophy but marifa which comes through ibadah of course we believe that ibadah should be with mm, proper understanding therefore we say try to be uh, understanding of allah as a philosopher who is abid <laughs> if it's you want to make great progress like allah metabata boy but just philosophy no just ibadah without understanding also is not going to help that much Kho. then he says Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam according to hadith Qudsi Allah told him lawlaq lama khalaqtul aflaq had you not been there i would not have created these skies and stars etc why because this world allah has created this world for human beings and human beings are created for what for reaching so if we didn't have insan kamil if we didn't have someone who has ma'rifa with love then 
we would not have achieved the purpose yeah for example you have a school because you want people to graduate if you don't have graduates and you see people are not going to reach that level you say if we are, n we are not going to have graduates, we would not have created this uh, school because we wanted people to learn. If we have a school, uh, still people are illiterate. We would not have made this a uh, school. So Rasulullah had this ma'rifa and love and he is the one that is fulfilling the purpose of creation and we should try to resemble. There's a beautiful Farsi poem here. Tufayl hasti ishqand adamiyo pari. Both human beings and angels are dependent on existence of love. If love for Allah at its high level was not there, in the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and you know other awliyaullah then there was no point in creation of Adam uh, I mean human beings Eradati binamata saadati bibari try to make efforts to get felicity happiness through this love so he says, whoever has him, whoever has some ambition and determination and finds in himself or herself substance, Johari Miyaba, so you find a jewel in yourself through servitude and piety and purity, should resemble and get closer to these. And then he makes uh, mention of some other poems. گرچه وسالش نبه کوشش دهند آنقدر ای دل که توانی بکوش although you cannot meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the beloved just based on the efforts but you have to make efforts as much as possible it's not only efforts Efforts with lots of other things, sincerity, attention, love, etc. But uh, you have to make efforts. And then it says, in this journey, if you reach the destination, Alhamdulillah, Zahi Saadat. And if you die on this journey without reaching Zahi Shahadat, at least you become martyr. <laughs> not martyr in the sense that you are killed by enemies bullet of enemy meaning that in this path you have died agar dar rah u mordi shahidi if you die in your uh, uh, journey on the way to allah you are a martyr wa agar burdi sab zainul abidi and if you manage to win and reach the end and precede others of course you are zina of servants of other servants and quran says wa man yakhruj min baytihi muhajiran ila allah wa rasulih thumma yudrikhu al maut faqad waqa ajruhu ala allah whoever leaves his house migrating towards Allah and the Messenger of Allah and then his death comes his reward is now upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this can be for physical hijrah I mean for example suppose someone was uh, migrating from Mecca to Medina when Rasulullah did hijrah or someone migrated from Mecca to Habasha if they died on the way but it can be also for a spiritual hijrah those who are trying to distance themselves from dunya from nafs ammare and before they reach they die 
these people are also muhajir ila Allah wa Rasulih and inshallah this ayah also would be applicable to them faqad waqa ajru ala Allah maybe be tariq al awlabiyah because they are making more efforts for the sake of Allah than someone who is just migrating from one place to another place then he says maybe you say this is havas havas uh, means a kind of desire normally we use havas when the desire is not realistic but it's not always like that uh, sometimes it's also good for example you say havas kardam beram ziyarat for example means now I have desire to go for ziyara for example so it can be used also for good uh, cases so it's a kind of desire in your heart sometimes can be for uh, things which are not uh, realistic sometimes can be for things which are realistic etc so the poet says I have havas I have desire to go and meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Maybe you say, you know, for someone like you, this is not really uh, desire. It's just deception. You are not a salik illallah. You are not a wayfarer. So he says, Dar ghurur in havas gar jan daham beh ke dil dar khane wo dukhan daham says okay you say I am not a good way failure for example or maybe you know I'm not able to reach but it's better I die seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than giving my heart to house and shop etc yeah so so even if I am not going to be a very good and successful way failure I prefer to be on this journey I prefer to die seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even if I'm not going to find him خب Alhamdulillah the book finish wa tawfiq min Allah al-aziz al-hakim wa alhamdulillah rabbil alameen wa salatu ala muhammad wa alihi ajma'in Allahumma sallallahu alayhi so just as a quick review we said that first there is a need for a spiritual journey and then Mullah Muhsin Faith Kashani compared between a physical journey and a spiritual journey. Physical journey has origin, destination, masafa, distance. You need a, uh, maybe a camel or a horse, you know, something, a mule to ride. You need hamrah, you need a guide, you need provision. So we try to explain what are these things in a spiritual journey and then he said we should observe 25 things. As a reminder, number one, to be very careful about our five obligatory prayers. Muhafazat, hafizu ala salawat wa salat al To be very careful and look after our salah. Number two was muhafazat uh, with respect to Salatul Juma or Salatul Eidain, Eid al Adha, Eid al Fitr. Number three was about muhafazat with respect to Nawafil Yomiyya, daily recommended prayers. So, three first three was Salat, F Salat Yomiyya, Salatul Juma, Salatul Eidain, and Nawafil Yomiyya. Number four. Muhafizat with respect to fasting of the months of Ramadan. Six Muhafizat for performing three days of fasting every month. Six about infaq, giving away uh, and having fixed amount for the poor people. And seven was zakat. Or maybe six was zakat, seven was infaq. Eight was muhafizat bar hajjatul islam, the obligatory hajj. Nine 
Ziyara of the graves of Prophet and Imams. Ten, being careful with the rights of brothers and helping them with their hajat, their needs. Try to solve their problems. Eleven, to compensate for whatever from the previous things that you have missed. Tadarak, to do tadarak, means to compensate. Twelve, any bad traits of character that we have, like arrogance, miserliness, jealousy, etc., we have to remove and then through riyazat va mudadat. You remember we talked about these two. Riyadha means self training, self disciplining, and mudadat. By doing the opposite, you should try to gain the virtues. So from bukhl to sakhawa, from miserliness to, for example, generosity, from fearfulness to bravery. 13, to refrain from all manhiyat, all the things which are prohibited. And if God forbids, Masiya takes place, to do istighfar and tawbah quickly. 14, to avoid shubuhat, those things which are dubious, which are problematic, you're not, they are not known to be haram, but they're likely to be haram. 15, not to get into what doesn't matter to us. Ma la ya'ni. We shouldn't get into what doesn't matter. 16, to reduce eating, sleeping, and speech. 17, to read every day some passages of the Quran. For example, seven, uh, sorry, 50 verses of the Quran, for example, at least. 18, to have some azkar and da'awat every day as your word. Some salawat, some la ilaha illallah, some zakri yunusiyya, etc. 19, to be in company of ulama and asking them, benefiting from their knowledge. 20, husnul khulq, having good temper, being kind to people. 21, making sadq, truthfulness, in words and actions, your motto. Not just be truthful. This is your priority, this is your motto, sadq. 22, trusting, tawakkul, trusting in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all affairs and not paying your attention to asbab as independent things. Tawajjuh ba asbab nadashtan. It doesn't mean not to use them, but it means just use them as a means, as a, you know, thing that you have to do. But the main thing is trusting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I go to doctor, I take the medicine, but my shifa comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I go to work, but my rest comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 23, to be patient with annoyance and, you know, bad uh, behavior of people who are family members, friends, neighbors, you know, these people that you live with them. You have to be patient. 24, to enjoy the good and prohibit the bad as much as you can and also try to have shafaqa for the people who have gone astray to bring them back if you can if you are not able to help them and you might be affected of course you save yourself 25 which was the last one was to be very careful about your time and have a special program for your time for example for every slot of day and night you know you should have some uh, you know, program for yourself, some zik, some word, etc. These were 25 things that he mentioned, and then uh, he emphasized on the need for horia, freedom, with respect to uh, three things, with respect to 
bad desires with respect to temptations of bad habits and also bad customs or norms that might be in, in the society we should not follow them uh, and if they are not uh, in conflict with your principle no problem you shouldn't you know, look odd do in romans as romans do 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 in rome as romans do but if they are in conflict with your principles you, you should not uh, you know imitate them unless the situation of taqiyya etc that's different and then today we talked about the outcomes of observing these 25 and how every day you make progress if you are ahl ma'rifat your knowledge your understanding would be uh, coming through inspiration by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala based on your preparation and preparation is based on your ibadah and company of ulama and if someone is not ahl ma'rifah at least his du'as would be accepted his heart would be purer and then he talked about uh, ma'rifah and ibadah ma'rifah that we are interested in is a ma'rifah which comes through ibadah, through yaqeen because ibadah also brings yaqeen and love ma'rifah which brings love we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us tawfiq to uh, study this short uh, book or this kind of essay by the late Mullah Muhsin Faith the Kashani we ask Allah to send his salutations to his soul to inshallah to direct him with Ahlul Bayt salam, and to increase his likes and to enable us inshallah to follow their footprint, uh, footprints inshallah bi -iznillah. we ask Allah to give us tawfiq to implement what we have learned Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Jazakumullah khairan Allah Shaykhan al-Kareem do you have time for some? Yes. Sir. Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum, Shaykh. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Thank you very much. May Allah bless you, Shaykh. For another beautiful session and completing the book. Um, I had two questions. One of it might be a bit. Um, out of place because it's a comprehensive discussion so feel free to, to leave that one out but um, the first question um, that I had is it's just on the uh, first page um, of what was what was discussed that if an individual kind of uh, follows these 25 um, points um, then every every day they will see a progression um, but because you know our soul and nafs is not very subtle um, and, and delicate um, we might not realize it it will have to be a big change so my question on this is um, that you know the criteria on you know if I compare myself with five years ago or ten years ago if I want to see whether I've progressed or not you know on the one hand you, you feel that you know you're, you're much worse than what you are before but then you don't know whether you are worse because you are really worse or because you have moved forward mm. you feel worse because you know your knacks you know your deficiency before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we know that the more on this journey you go ahead you realize how insignificant you are so but really sometimes you you are you have really really gone bad that's why you feel worse mm. so how do we know you know which what what scenario we're in because bec it becomes like a battle or or a uh, conflict between progression and maybe modesty and humility and you know that's the kind of the first confusion the, the second point it was on the Allah that you mentioned um, that is mentioned in this um, book as well um, so, so you mentioned on Laqa and how um, this mahabba and love uh, you know kind of is a, is a channel and platform for that um, 
we, we know that you know everyone obviously reaches Allah everyone reaches this the safat of Allah but Naqa, we are referring to the context of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but again even when it comes to the mercy of Allah doesn't everyone also benefit and everyone is a recipient and meet and has an intersection with the level of mercy of Allah so what do we mean exactly when we say you, you, you meet Allah because this is the call we always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to give us you know and that's the ultimate I think you know the journey where we're going is is, is level Allah but what is exactly that point or you know possibly there is a spectrum that there are different degrees of level um, maybe the second point as I said it, it might require a longer discussion so feel free to keep it very brief or hard discard thank you so much Asantum. thank you very much Jazakumullah. very good questions with respect to the first question actually this is very uh, common issue and very you know uh, delicate issue also on the one hand we should always keep our humility and we should be aware of our problems for sure we have problems uh, we should not reach self-admiration it is one hand on the other hand we need to be not despaired we need uh, not to lose our you know uh, hope or what today you know say you know your self-confidence for example they call it but you know you should not become despaired and hopeless my understanding right now of course uh, maybe if i think more uh, you know i can add to it but uh, the thing that right now comes to my mind you know is that first of all this is an area that having a mentor helps a lot a mentor can tell us whether you are doing too much self-criticism or too little of self-criticism sometimes I may not understand but the mentor can tell me you have made progress or you didn't make progress so mentor is not just to give us lessons Me mentor is also to check us and this is why you know mentors use different techniques to understand for example one way through dreams through dreams of their trainee they understand you know their situations sometimes they can look into their you know uh, spirit so they if they are good mentors you know really so mentor is one thing another thing is that mu'mineen who are fellow travelers they can help each other if i can honestly ask my fellow brother or sister you know for sisters you know, they can ask sisters for brothers for brothers that how do you see do you see me making any progress do you see me making no progress do you see me, i am you know going backward it's very good to have sessions maybe one to one maybe three four people together who a study together who discuss these things together you know to because al mu'minu mir'atul mu'min maybe I can see myself in the mirror of my brother maybe I cannot be mirror for myself he can see also himself in my mirror this is number two number three there are some signs not proof some signs of progress or you know regression for example if I become more humble more kind more thirsty for learning more respectful to the people who are spiritual 
These four things are very good signs. But if I lose my humility or my interest or you know I underestimate others I am not kind to people this means I have not made progress so these signs can help but one of the du'as that we should always have is to ask Allah to show us our reality as much as of course need <laughs> because if Allah shows our reality too much maybe we become dispersed but you say Allah you know please show me those things that I have to work on right now if you show me everything you know I may lose my hope but show me enough that I can work on and also you know encourage me because Allah is the best Murabi is the best educator so we can ask him to tell us you know if we honestly ask Allah he would show us where we have to work where, you know where we have to improve and we sh certainly need you know to rely on him uh, in this issue with respect to the second what sorry what was the second question it was about Leqa. Ah. Allah. Allah Metabatabai Rahmatullah Allah in Al Mizan says that Reqa Allah is Raful Hujub. When the veils are removed, we call this Leqa Allah. For some people, this happens in dunya. So they reach that level of Ma'rifah of Allah that. We ha they have ilm huzuri, they have knowledge by presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is no hijab. In the hereafter, liqa'ullah happens for all. Ya ayyuhal insan, not ya ayyuhal mu'min, ya ayyuhal insan, innaka kadihun ila rabbika kadhan fammullaqi. Every human being has liqa'ullah. What does it mean? Means for every person, hijab will be removed. But if you manage to have your hijab removed in dunya, then you will enjoy. Or at least if you are a moment that through pressure of death, I don't know what happens to Bar in Barzakh, etc. On the day of judgment, you are prepared for liqa'ullah, for removal of hijab. You are very happy. But if someone is not purified and just hijab is removed, is such a great sense of embarrassment and such a great sense of, you know, uh, regret that this can be the worst thing in your life. You know, if it's you know very strange, you may say, how can be the worst thing to meet Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala without hijab? Yeah, because He is absolute light. If I am in darkness, the more I am in dark, the more I am afraid of facing light. So, for a bad person to meet another bad person is not as bad as meeting good people. And when they see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very embarrassing and very difficult for them. So they are not enjoying this liqa. Thank you very much. May Allah bless you, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen.